Hey guys, now today we're going to be having a look at a brand new piece of Amiga hardware. I've literally just got back from the post office, put the camera on because I want to get this video recorded um, in the next 20 minutes because since it gets to half past four, it goes dark in here and even though I've got like five light sources on me, you won't be able to see a thing. So we're going to try and quickly get this unboxing set up. I'll quickly talk you through what this is first though, as I've been anticipating getting my hands on this for the best part of two years now. This originally got announced back in the summer of 2014 and it was due to be released in November of that year. Unfortunately, it had some software problems and two years later, they finally ironed it out and it's been released and it is the Aeon Prisma Mega Mix. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, it's actually a sound card for the classic Commodore Amiga or more accurately, they're describing this as a music card now because what it does, it lets you play modern audio formats on your classic Commodore Amiga without really using much of the CPU overhead. So you can do stuff like, um, you know, WAV audio or FLAC or MP3, stream internet radio and with no noticeable slowdown on your Amiga, it lets you output those modern uh, media formats using this card. And also it's got stuff in here as well like a, a pass through for the Amiga's audio and also you can connect a, a CDDA header onto here as well from your CD drive so it nicely mixes everything together which you know for me is pretty cool because at the moment I've kind of got other devices on my Amiga 4000. Um, doing similar roles, but none of them are quite as tidy as this. Um, at the moment, I do listen to internet radio on my Amiga 4000 using a parallel port device called a mass player, which, you know, does a job all right, but because it goes into the parallel port, uh, the output of that is a lot slower than uh, this, which uses either the Zorro 2 or a clock port on the Amiga. Um, you know, 16 bits, a lot faster. At the moment, I'm only limited to about 160 kilobytes a second on the mass player. After that, you know, start stuttering and lagging and all that. And also, you know, taking up the parallel port's not great. I've got stuff like a printer and an audio sampler that I've got to swap out now and then. So this will mean I can leave it plugged in all the time and it will give me a nice, tidy solution for listening to uh, music on my Amiga. So what I think we'll do first of all, before we go through the setup and installation, we'll do a quick unboxing and see what's included in the pack. Right now, I've made a little bit of a start on the sellotape here because um, I think they used about half a roll of tape on it by the looks of it. Very well packaged, nice work Amiga kit. Nothing was falling out of this. So uh, let's have a little look what's inside the mysterious brown boxes. Now there are actually two of them included here. So uh, I'm just gonna run quickly through there and hopefully not cut anything that's inside. All right, let's open this one first and see what's in here. And by the looks of it, this is actually the, uh, the card itself. I believe. So that's in the first box. Move that out the way quickly. See what we've got in this one as well. And now we have the uh, the software and the the mounts for it by the looks of it. So let's get all of this out of the way, and we can have a look what's included. All right. So we have some uh, instructions on a single sheet here as well. But who reads those? And it gives you installation instructions, and there is a wiki actually you can go on as well if uh, you need a bit of help with it, so we'll come back to that. Uh, there's also a backing plate here for the Amiga with Zorro ports, so uh, this means I can put that in the back of my Amiga 4000 and get all of my audio outputs there, and also a connecting cable to the Prisma, which uh, is in here. So let's take it out of the uh, anti-static bag here. Very well packaged. And there it is, you can see up closer. That is the Prisma card, and we'll take it out quickly without knocking the camera and that's what you get so um, looking around it we have a header there that I uh, think connects to the um, the mounting plate that I just showed you um, there's also like I said a few different ways of connecting this um, it, mine will go into uh, this big expansion port on the bottom here that will plug into the uh, Amiga Zorro slot uh, that will be the chip that does all of the work I'd imagine the decoder on there too um, not much on the back of it just Little sticker there to prove that they've tested it out so we'll look a bit more in depth in just a moment on that and also you get the software on a very cool looking floppy disk I always love transparent floppies they were very cool and this one's purple as well so now that I've done that let's get the Amiga 4000 cracked open and we'll have a little look inside it actually I'll show you my recent upgrades to it and we'll install the Prisma Okay, so I've got my Amiga 4000 on my main desk here to give me a little bit more room to work inside the machine. And as you can see, I've uh, cracked the hood, the top of the case is off. And I thought this might be a good opportunity to give you a little updated uh, brief tour of what I've got inside my A4000, as there might be a few new bits in here since I last showed you it, including, um, hiding in the darkness there, a little CPU adapter. Now this is actually 
an 040 to 060 CPU adapter plugged into the um, original Commodore CPU card. Now this lets me plug the highest revision Motorola 68060 CPU into the original Commodore card. Now originally this machine um, was an 030 running at 25 megahertz. Now I've got an 060 running at 50 megahertz in here, uh, which is a really nice CPU, you know, the best you can get for a classic Amiga really, if you don't count the PowerPC stuff. Uh, but the downside is that I've got it plugged into the original Commodore 3640 CPU card, which has a few design flaws to say the least, including the fact that it's got no memory on board, so it is kind of bottlenecked, but hopefully one day I'll get a nice card like a warp engine or something, and uh, you know, that will be all ready just to plug into it and it'll be a lot quicker. But you know, for now, definitely an improvement over what I had before. Um, got a DVD drive here as well with the uh, audio cable all ready for the Prism Megamix. Power supply there, a 160 gigabyte IDE hard disk. And then the interesting stuff lies around the side. So I want to turn the Amiga around quickly. This is where the cards plug into it. Now, at the moment, I've got a 256 megabyte Big Ram Plus expansion in the top here. That gives me you know, plenty of memory. I think uh, this machine had about eight megabytes when I first got it, so yeah, definitely got a lot more now. There's also um, some sims plugged in underneath here. I don't know if you can see those, with 16 megabytes of fast RAM on there. Uh, speaking of which, this big card here is a Picasso 4 24-bit graphics card. That lets me run the Amiga in some really high resolution screen modes, which is really nice for the workbench, you know, 16.8 million colors and that kind of stuff, true color, RTG. Um, also a little coin cell battery under there as well to keep the time. And there is also at the end there, you can see a couple more cards here. Um, that is a Rapid Road USB 2.0 uh, USB card that uh, I've got the mounts there. So you can plug USB into the Amiga, which is pretty cool. And underneath that is the Cross Surf or X Surf Ethernet uh, device. So I can get my Amiga online. And as you can see, I've only actually got one Zorro slot left. So that is where the Prisma Mega Mix will go. So what I'm going to do now is get the backing plate taken off and we'll get it plugged in, get the Amiga all set up again and crack on with the software installation. Now unfortunately we seem to have uh, hit a bit of a snag when I first installed it. Now I presume that the Amiga's audio would just pass through it natively. There are actually, um, if I move the camera down a little bit, we do have four different um, mini jack connectors on the back here. Now I've checked Wikipedia and the, the manual that comes with it. Unfortunately none of these are labelled so I'm not really sure which one's which. Um, I've tried this little mini jack in uh, all four of them though. It's a bit hard to do from the back, but as you can see, you know, I'm putting it into them all here and we're not getting any output of any of these here. So and if I plug it into the Amiga's um, native output here on the back, we do hear the game. So something's not right there. As I presume it should just pass through natively. And uh, I've got this little um, extension cable into the, the ports on the back all connected up right. It only goes in one way. So maybe we need to do a software installation before that works. So what I'm going to do is we'll boot it into Workbench and we'll run the, the floppy disk installer. So here's the floppy disk that comes bundled with the Prisma. I'm going to pop that into my Amiga's floppy drive on the front here. And then um, we can hopefully install the software and maybe see if we can get some audio out of this. So uh, there's a drive icon there. Usually with Amiga Kit, they're very good and it's all just point and click. So um, we always put it on expert user. <laughs> uh, fly through these, yep, copy that there. Just so you can kind of see what it's doing. Copy the library to the libs directory, yep, that's right. Um, do you want to install? Now an MHI driver means that you can do um, use Amiga audio programs like Amiga Amp to play um, internet radio and MP3s and that, so we'll install that. And that's it. Can be found in your, uh, okay, in your work directory. Look in work directory. Mm -hmm. Can be found in here. Uh, maybe it hasn't got an icon. <laughs> Unless I'm being blind, it isn't in my work directory. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. Uh, what I'll try doing now, though, quickly, we've um, I've got an audio CD here. I've got the um, CDDA 
uh, the CD audio output connected to the Prisma, so maybe we can get some sound through the, the CD-ROM drive. So we'll load up the Play CD program that comes included with Workbench 3.9. Give the drive a second to spin up. And there we are. Uh, click on play. Now the track's apparently playing, but again, we're not getting any audio out of the uh, Prisma Mega Mix. So yeah, I'm hoping I haven't got a bad card here. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we'll try um, see if we can use the MPEG, MPEG encoder chip to uh, decode some MP3. We'll try a Mega Amp. Now this worked fine with my mass player before, um, playing MP3s. Uh, insert a file into here. So not the slickest install I've ever done so far, I've got to say. Um, maybe I'm missing something really obvious here, but I figured, you know, if I problem solve on camera, if anyone else has this problem, you'd probably be able to solve it afterwards. Uh, okay, so I'll need to change the config so it's coming out of the Prisma, I imagine. Uh, Mass Pro Library, yep, we'll change that to Prisma Library. I'll be the one to save. Maybe we'll try restarting Amiga Ramp. Oh, and we heard some clicking from the speakers there. And that was probably a good sign. Back into my MP3 directory. What will YouTube not copyright strike me for? Let's try that one. Oh, there we are. Audio. Okay. So by the looks of it, we do have the correct audio output um, jack on the back of the Prisma Mega Mix, and it will decode MP3, but for some reason it won't play um, Amiga Paula audio through it, or the CD-ROM drive. So <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera off for a bit and see if I can do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting on that, and I'll get back to you soon. All right, guys, time for an update on the Prisma Mega Mix. I'm actually recording this 10 days after my initial setup and unboxing, and I'm now full of cold, so sorry if I sound a little bit husky in this uh, part of the video. Uh, my Amiga 4000 has been in bits like this for a week and a half. While I've tried to get some uh, you know, information and support from the forums and... Uh, I've sent a few support tickets to Amiga Kit, got a bit of information out of them. Now it turns out, I was being a little bit stupid. I do say a little bit because in my defense, I'll tell you why in a moment, in terms of trying to get the Amiga's native audio through the card. And that's because you need, if you look at the back of my A4000 here, you need to run a little cable out of the Amiga's phono ports into the back of the Prisma Mega Mix. And I do say I was kind of being a bit stupid there, but you know, this is kind of my first big box Amiga, really. I always had Amiga 500s and 1200s and stuff when I was younger, so I didn't realise that you can't actually get the Amiga's audio through the Zorro ports. It only works through the video ports, apparently, and because this is only, you know, a Zorro card, not like my graphics card that takes up all of the slots, uh, there's no way to get audio through uh, the Zorro ports. So you need that, you know, little cable in there, which makes sense. Only thing is, it wasn't actually mentioned in, uh, you know, the very brief documentation that you get with this and that it's not even mentioned on the wiki and that they've set up either so uh, you know if like me you, you didn't really have a lot of experience with this kind of thing um, it took me about a week to figure out that's what you needed and also the ports on the back of the backing plate here are not labeled in any way either so um, you know without the help of the forums I probably never would have figured that out now we get on to the next step um, which is unfortunately if we listen to the audio here turn my speakers up a bit there um, I've got the Lotus 2 theme playing again here. And you may notice we're not getting the full instruments playing out. That's because, um, unfortunately, I'm only getting the right channel of audio. My left speaker's completely dead, and I'm only getting, like, you know, one legged audio out of the Prisma um, with the Amiga's native pass through. And it's not the cable I'm using, you know, I've, I've tried this one here that's just, you know, worked on another device. I've tried this one as well. Um, so unfortunately, chatting to the guys at Amiga Kit, they're suspecting that maybe my backing plate is faulty. So, uh, yeah, you know, for me that's not really usable in its current state, so um, I'm going to be shipping this unit back to them. And uh, in terms of the CD um, audio that I was trying to get working before, I've since read, you know, that 
you will actually need um, the external um, digital audio device. It's the SPDIF uh, module that they're going to be releasing to enable the uh, CD audio. So at its present state, it will not play CD audio through it. Now, I, I did get a bit of advice off um, Michael, who made the card, and also the guys at Amiga Kit and some people on the forum saying that if you put a couple of jumpers over these pins here, that should um, enable the CDDA header. Unfortunately, you know, I've tried loads of different jumpers on there. I'm still not getting any CD audio through. And the latest update I heard today is they may actually have to code a little bit of software to enable the CDDA header. So, you know, at the time being, that's really, um, I kind of class that as not working right now, the CD audio input, which, you know, is a bit disappointing because I did want to, you know, play like Amiga CD games and have the, um, the audio passing through this card and have everything nicely mixed together. Uh, because a lot of the um, CD-based Amiga games um, use both uh, CD audio for music and the Amiga's native audio for like sound effects and stuff, so it would have been nice to have all that mixed together. But, you know, I'm confident in the guys, they'll get that working. And uh, as I said, hopefully, the fact that I'm just getting one-legged audio is um, just down to a problem with the backing plate, maybe. So I'm going to ship this back to Amiga Kit, and uh, I'll give you an update um, in a future video on that. But I think for now, let's have a look at what the the Prisma is actually used for. Um, let's get a bit more positive in this review. I'm going to set the camera back up on the tripod and we'll try playing some uh, music on this card. Alright, so I've loaded the workbench up and I reckon it's time that we give the Prisma Mega Mix a proper workout and kind of use it for the kind of things I want to use it for day to day. Now, I did mention earlier on in this video that using internet radio is one of my uh, big uses for the Amiga, so we'll load up Groove Salad. This is an online station I listen to quite a lot. And I think it's quite a low bitrate, only about 128 kbps. Let's see. And as you can hear, it's playing that with no problems. As you'd expect it would, you know, just being 128 um, kbps stream, that's not really all that demanding. The mass player could handle that. Let's try a few um, MP3s that I've dragged into my RAM disk here, and I've tried to pick ones that hopefully won't get me a copyright strike. So we'll start with this one. This is a 128 as well. And that's playing fine. I can open windows on the workbench and, you know, no stutter or lag or anything like that. So, you know, in terms of uh, CPU performance, no hit there. Let's try something a bit more demanding. This one's a 256. So that's a lot better. Now, usually... The mass player would have fallen over by now, the audio would be stuttering and lagging and uh, performance on the Amiga would have downgraded, but yeah, it's not skipped a beat there. Let's try something a bit more demanding, a 320 kilobytes per second MP3. Now most of my MP3s are encoded at 320, and again, yeah, no dropouts, nothing like that, no lag, no stutter, so that is a lot better than the mass player. Which is really cool because uh, until now, um, all of my MP3 collection, I've had to downgrade any ones I wanted to play on my A4000 to A128 to you know, still get decent system performance. But as you saw there, that handles 320 with no problems whatsoever. So uh, I'm looking forward to using the Prisma a lot more for listening to uh, music and online radio streams and stuff on my Amiga. Um, like I said before, we need to get that issue sorted with the one-legged Paula uh, Amiga Native audio. So I'm going to ship this back to Amiga Kit. Hopefully it's just a simple, you know, replace the backing plate issue. Um, the documentation could do with a bit of improvement, guys, I've got to say. And uh, that CDDA header, when they get that working, which, you know, I'm sure they'll get that sorted. I'm in no rush for that, but as soon as I get the Amiga's Native audio and that amazing, you know, um, decoding that the card can do, which, as you saw then, for an Amiga is very impressive. I'm very excited to be using this card, so definitely impressed with that. So that's been a look at the Prisma Mega Mix. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm going to get myself a hot lemony drink and have a lie down, I think, before I collapse, and I'll catch you in the next video.